Um, good afternoon, and I'm delighted to be here from um, Berlin. I am actually half Irish, half German, so it's a nice occasion to come back home as well. Um, I'm delighted to be here. Um, SAP is a large software company, as many of you um, might know, and both diversity and artificial intelligence are very important um, for us. Um, in terms of diversity, there are, we actually have quotas for women in management positions with relatively high targets for the tech industry. Um, we have over 140 nationalities working within the company and we're 95,000 employees. Um, and we do a lot in terms of um, including autis autism colleagues who actually help us a great deal on the, the development side. Um, and on the um, artificial intelligence, we, we recognize that this is a revolution in the software space. And of course, we're looking at how can we enable our software to um, include artificial intelligence so that we make processes better. But I'm actually here to talk to you um, about the opportunities and challenges we see. As Anne said, um, I work with startups. We have programs focused just on AI, and you'll see one of the founders of a startup called Refine AI who was working with us last year. He's on next after me. Um, and we also actually also have female founder programs where we look specifically just to um, help scale female founded um, companies. So I thought just to warm up a little bit before we get into um, the challenges and opportunities that AI and diversity bring with them. I'm going to do a little test and I want you to be very vocal. I'm going to do going to show you a picture with nine images and I want you to tell me how many labradoodles you see. So just call out the number the moment you see it. And I'm counting on your participation. Ready? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> it's four. It's four. But it's not that easy if you see. It's very hard to differentiate between the fried chicken and the, <laughs> the labradoodle. We'll go for another one. Here, here we have, you're getting warmed up. So here we have sheepdog and mop. So call out the moment you see, you can count the sheepdogs. Ready? It's also four, four. And we do one last one. Here we have chihuahuas or muffins. Are you ready? So tell me how many chihuahuas you see. Go. It's five, right? So I just do this little exercise because we talk a lot about artificial intelligence, we talk a lot about machine learning, but what is it really and how is it changing what we're doing? Um, so the goal of machine learning is to teach machines basically to be able to do the tasks that we humans can do. So that's recognize speech, um, make decisions, or tell the difference between a chihuahua and uh, a muffin in this case. And the way that's done is the machines get fed so humans do this quite naturally, but the machines have to be trained to do this. And so what the way that happens is they get fed huge amounts of data. That can be uh, images, that can be um, voice conversations, that can be video clips. And every time the machine is delivered a data set, it basically learns and can then in the end, in some cases, recognize what a muffin and what a chihuahua is faster than we can. The issue is, depending on how these algorithms are trained, they're going to give the same output. So if the data sets that go into them are biased, and, and Jerry was making the point earlier, in any form or other, um, the outcome will also be flawed. So give you an example with the chihuahuas here. If the data scientist who's programming this algorithm doesn't know, just because it's something he or she doesn't know, that there are lighter and that there are darker chihuahuas. When you, if the algorithm is only programmed with this creamy colored chihuahua, then the results will be, if you do a search for a chihuahua, it will not include either the, the extreme ends of the spectrum. And that's when then the data becomes flawed. Um, this is often done in an unconscious way. Jerry mentioned it a minute ago as well. It's not that the programmer sits down and just does this on purpose. It's something that he or she just doesn't know, and that way, it basically, the outcomes of these algorithms then become flawed. Um, I'm going to do another little exercise. Can anybody guess what search term I entered here for Google? Engineer, exactly. 
Um, again, if you enter engineer, there are two women on this page and that there are 12 men. This doesn't necessarily represent quite the proportion, the way the, the world is diverse. You will also see there are mainly white men on this page. That doesn't mean that in the world in general, the majority of engineers are white males in the 30 to 40 age range. This doesn't, through these flaws, it doesn't reflect the, the world as it is. In this case, it could be engineers or data scientists who have tagged those photos, but it can also be u internet users who tag these photos to give these results. We'll do one more. Can anybody guess what I entered here? Yeah, assistant, it was the word, yeah. Secretary is basically the word. And here you actually see that the only male on this picture is a cartoon character, which is even worse, but... Um, <laughs> The issue I have or we have with this and we need to be aware of is it actually perpetuates stereotypes. So the more you get, it's, it's unconscious even on people. If you're trying to do a presentation, you enter assistant. It's an unconscious stere you know, stereotype that just gets perpetuated through these kind of biases that are then included in um, algorithms. The machines are also only as diverse as the engineers that really program them, is the point. Um, if you have teams that are, you know, I'm going to give an extreme example, 20 to 30 year old white males, it will not reflect the world around us. Last year in the US, 26% of all data jobs were held by women. Um, if you think of it, if you look at 17% of all um, major contributors to Wikipedia are female. That will just mean that the information that we get out of Wikipedia or the, inform the, 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 the information we get out of searches or the use of such programs is not going to represent the world um, around us. And that is an issue and that we need to be um, conscious of. Um, there, is, there is positive as well. Um, just in the case that Jerry showed, we also see opportunities um, for AI to, to recognize biases, to dispel stereotypes. If the data sets that the algorithms are trained on are consciously chosen to really reflect the world around us, um, then we feel that AI can actually help reduce biases and dispel, as I said, dispel stereotypes. It can also be used to audit companies. The, the, the technology is that good, and you'll see an example in the, the speech after mine. Um, the technology is that good that we can actually use it to audit. We can audit websites, we can audit companies, we can audit governments to see how diverse are they? What kind of biases do they include? And I'd like to close with just one example actually of a, of a solution that SAP has incorporated into its human resource management system. It's called Business um, Beyond Bias. And what we, what the idea behind this was and why we created it was to actually have integrated into our human capital uh, management solution that deals with everything that has to do with employees, a, a capability to really identify and prevent and eliminate bias where it happens, uh, as it happens, um, in the, with the employees. So what you can do here is we use AI, for example, to um, audit job descriptions for specific keywords, um, like in a job description we're looking for a rock star or a ninja, may cause a woman necessar not necessarily to apply because it seems well, I wouldn't apply for something like that. So this system basically flags unintentional biases and makes suggestions for new words. The same we do for succession management or performance reviews. We look at are there biases, unintentional in most cases, but biases in those um, job performances or in succession plans um, to be able to then do something about that and ensure that the workplace is more um, diverse. So that brings me to a close. Thank you very much. Um, and any information you can find on sap.io and feel free to reach out to me afterwards. Thank you.